Hello there and welcome to another presentation for the Easy As Accounting software. This video I'm going to take you through a, a couple of quick setup processes when you first set the computer up or the software up. When you first log in the very first time you're going to see this and whatever the name is that you gave your company or your business name whatever you run under and the current financial year that you set the system up for. Let's say you need to, for starters, you're going to want to enter in your address details, your phone details and all that sort of thing. There's two ways of doing that. You can click the setup icon and go up to here into general and say enter the name of your business which is also for your address details. Highlight that. When you move your mouse over something it tells you underneath more information each time. So it says enter address and business details for invoices etc. So I can click this here. It pops up this screen. Now one, two, three, four, five, because you can have up to five businesses at one time with this program. So each business can be added in new. If I click here on this line, there's nothing there. It's not going to select anything. If I select this again, it comes back to this particular business. Each time you bring that screen up, you have to then select your business to get out of it because it, the system's dumb. It only knows, it only does what you tell it to do. It doesn't even though there's only one business here at present, it still thinks there could be five because it could be. So it says, "Do you? if you want to exit this screen, you have to select your business. So you have to select this. Even though you've got one, you just click on that name and it jumps back to your screen. Simple as that. See how I just click this then and that came up automatically? That's how I do it. I don't go into the setup. I don't go into here. That sucks. I click this. This particular area on the software, if I click that, you click on your name, it brings this up. I'm going to show you something. If I actually entered another business here, see I've got another business there now. If I click that, I now change to that business. If I click the expenses, see there's nothing in here. If I click this again, I jump back here, I'm going to change back to my original business. I'm going to click that. Now I'm back to the original business and there's all the items. See that? That's how easy it is to change between businesses. It is so simple. Editing. If I click edit, against my max lawn mowing, I come up to here. So here is where I can enter all the information. I can enter my phone number, I can enter the email address, and I can enter my address details. You get the idea. Here you can enter your business number, blah, 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 blah. Um, in Australia, I think they've got to show it as A, B, N, with a little something like that with a number afterwards. So you want to put that there if you're in Australia. You've got your sales tax. So you can enter your sales tax number which will appear on the invoices as well. And this is just a blank field. You might have something else that needs to appear on there. Ah, you can enter it as well. This section here, by default it says here, if you leave these empty, by default your invoice or your quotes or your credit numbers or your purchase orders will always start at number one for that particular financial year. This works per financial year, folks. If it's if you're halfway through the year, or even at the beginning of the year, you might not want to print off invoice number one to your first customer because it makes it look like, geez, am I the first client you've had this year? I never start there. I always make mine start at 500 or 250. I just pluck a figure out of my head for the year and I start it. So I might want my first invoice to start at 451. By default, it actually won't start at 451. It starts at the next invoice. So when it starts, it will give me invoice number 452. This is the start number. It always goes one afterwards when, you, when it appears on the screen. So I enter that in there. I want my invoices to start there. So the first invoice I create will be this. You've got a help icon here, which gives you a little bit of inform added information, especially for the Australians. You've got this help icon here, which gives you all the information that I just told you about the uh, numbering of the invoices. Only other thing I want to point out is this. If you're in Canada, and another country, I know that there's other, there's, there's in the excess of over 10 countries now using this software. If your country requires, if you live in a part, I'm going to use Canada as an example, okay? There are areas of Canada where Canadians have to collect not one form of sales tax, but two. So this allows you to turn, switch on what we call the two tax system. Majority of our clients by default are in the one tax system, such as America and Australia especially, we only collect one tax. If I click this here, it changes the system. This will come up, it will tell you, are you sure you're changing to a two tax system? This needs to be set up before you start entering details in the system. 
hear my warning before you start entering. You can do it afterwards, but you need to know what you've done. You can, you can go from a one system to a two, but you can't go from a two back to a one. Two back to one, it still has the recorded entries from the two system. So what that means is this. If I click OK, I'm going to show you. I'm going to select here. I'm going to jump into expenses. See now we've got GST paid, PST paid. PST is a default because that's what some regions in Canada use. Okay, so it has this column here. If I put an entry here and you switch it back to one system, that entry is always going to exist, folks. So it's going to be deducted off this amount and you're not going to get a true figure. That's why we say select it first. But you can go from a 1 to a 2. You can't go from a 2 back to a 1. But the default is set at 1. So the possibility of someone going from a 2 back to 1 is not going to happen. But I just wanted to explain that to you. And I wanted to show you, if I jump into the setup again here, see, now we can change not one, but two rates of tax. So I change that back to the original 10. I can also change this. So you can change it to default rates. See that? So it is all there catered for you. I can change the name of the sales tax, particularly the second one or the first one, and that how it appears when you print your reports. It appears at whatever that name, or that name is that you now give it. I think that's all I need to show you for this particular video to keep this nice and short. Actually, I've got a bit of time. I'm going to show you one more feature. I'm going to show, actually I'm going to explain one more thing first. See this here? This system does not care what you type in here. It does not go by this. It goes by lines. It says line number one is for business one. Line number two is for business two. Line number three is for business three. It doesn't say line number one is for all entries for this. It doesn't care what you type in it. So what happens is if you switch to a new financial year, if I now jump forward to my new financial year, it's going to look at whatever details I've currently got in the system and bring them forward. So if I don't have anything entered in, if I don't have any of these details set up, and I jump forward, it also won't have them set up because it only records what you've previously got set up for the previous financial year. If I jump out of this, I'm going to show you. I'm going to jump into a new financial year really quickly. I'm going to double click on here. It's the same again, selecting a financial year here. Okay, it's the same. In this case, this is one click. Click here, one click doesn't do anything. I've got to double click. Two clicks brings this up. And this changes me to a new financial year. I can now select it. I'm going to go forward to 2010. I'm going to select that. And then I'm going to click select. And it takes off and sets up. Now I'm set up for 2010. If I click here, I'm selecting my business. There is nothing in here. See that? I'm going to click, go back to the previous financial year. Now I'm here. I'm back in that financial year. That is simple. That is how easy it is to flip back and forward. So, especially for the first couple of months of a new financial period, we often want to go back and see our previous year. And that gives us that facility. Um, I think that's all I need to show you for the quick setup. I'm going to jump out of this presentation. Thank you.